Once upon a time, there was a prince who was poor, but very skilled at making beautiful things. He had just enough money to marry, so he decided to pay suit to the princess of his choice. Now, there were many princesses in the nearby kingdoms, and many of them would have been happy to have him. But he set his sight on the emperor's daughter, because he thought, if you don't try, you will never get what you want. Now, the prince could make beautiful things, but he had two prized possessions, a rose bush and a nightingale. The rose bush grew on his father's grave. It only bloomed once every five years, and when it bloomed, it only produced a single rose. But what a rose! It had a fragrance that would even make the saddest person with the worst grief in the world— instantly feel joy and peace. And the nightingale could sing every beautiful song in the world, so you would never tire of listening to it. Since the prince wished to marry the princess, he put both of these treasures into silver cases and sent them to the princess. Now the princess was spoiled with all the toys and pretty things her father could buy her. When the presents arrived from the prince, the princess said, Oh, what pretty toys are these? And when she opened the first package and saw the rose bush, she clapped her hands and said, Oh, it is beautifully made. Look at the delightful craftsmanship on it, and how the rose petals look as soft as a real rose. It even smells wonderful. She reached out her hand to touch it, and as soon as she did, she jumped back in horror. Oh, what a nasty thing! she exclaimed. It's natural. There might even be a bug on it. And she burst into tears. The princess's ladies-in-waiting consoled her, saying, Look, there is still another package. Open it and take a look. Maybe it is nicer than the awful natural rosebush. So the princess opened up the case with the nightingale in it. As soon as the box was open, the bird began to sing. What a pretty thing that is, said one of the courtiers. It sounds just like the musical box that belonged to the late queen. The princess agreed, and with tears in her eyes, she reached out to touch the nightingale. But when her finger got near, the bird fluttered to get away from her. Oh, what a terrible thing, the princess cried. It's natural, too. It might have mites or fleas, and it's going to need to be fed if I keep it. It will be no end of trouble. How dare this prince send me ugly, dirty, natural things? Does he not know that I am the emperor's daughter? And with that, she opened the door to the cage and let the bird fly away. The prince was not discouraged. He thought to himself, if you take no for an answer, you will spend your whole life hearing the word no. So he put on his traveling boots and went to the emperor's court himself but he disguised himself so that he would not look like a prince. When he arrived in the emperor's palace, he put himself forward and asked for a job. I have many positions, said the emperor, but I also have many people applying for those positions all the time. I will remember you, though, and if anything comes open, I will hire you immediately. The prince was just turning around to leave when the emperor said, Oh, wait, I have just remembered. Our swineherd left us this morning. If you would like to tend the pigs, you may stay and work for me. So the prince went and worked as a swineherd. He made miserable wages, but he was happy. The first night, he made a beautiful little pot. When he boiled water in it, the bells played a pretty little song. Also, when he put his finger in the steam... The pot released fragrances of what everyone else in town was cooking in their pots. The princess was walking through the grounds with her ladies-in-waiting when she heard the song the pot was playing. Being spoiled and used to getting what she wanted, she told one of her ladies-in-waiting to take it for her. The lady went to the swineherd and said, Swineherd, the princess wants that musical pot. Give it to me so that I can give it to her. The price is ten kisses from the princess, said the swineherd. What an outrageous thing to say, said the lady-in-waiting. 
Of course the princess will not kiss you. You are nothing but a filthy swineherd. That is fine with me, said the swineherd. I will keep my pot if the princess wishes to keep her kisses. Will you take the kisses from one of the ladies-in-waiting instead? said the lady. I could give you ten kisses right now if you will give me the pot so I can bring it to my mistress. No, said the swineherd. Only kisses from the princess will do. If she wants the pot, she will come to give me kisses. If not, I will keep my pot. I like listening to it. So the lady-in-waiting went back to tell the princess what the swineherd had said. The princess was furious, but she wanted the pot even more. I will have that pretty little musical pot, she said. You ladies will come with me and spread your skirts so no one can see. I will give him ten kisses, because after all, what are kisses? Nothing at all. The princess and her ladies-in-waiting went back to the swineherd. The ladies stood in a circle around them and spread their skirts wide to try to block the view. The princess gave the swineherd ten kisses, and then he gave her the pot. The princess took the pot back to the castle. And there, she and her ladies played with it and laughed. They could smell what the shoemaker was having for dinner, and what the baker was having, and all the farmers as well. They laughed at how much better their own dinners were compared to the peasants' food, saying, They are having porridge spiced with bits of sausage, while we had a whole quail each, crusted with almonds and exotic spices. How quaint they are! So the princess and her ladies ate their fine cakes and sipped their expensive cordials and laughed at the poor meals the townspeople had to cook to keep their children's bellies full. Next, the swineherd made a wonderful rattle. It did not just say chintz, chintz when you shook it. It played all the waltzes, polkas, promenades, and mazurkas ever invented. one after another, until you shook it again to make it stop. You could have an entire ball from the beautiful music of this one little rattle. The princess was again walking around the grounds with her ladies-in-waiting when she heard enchanting music coming from the swineherd's pen. She went over to investigate and saw that the music came from a pretty little rattle, so she sent one of her ladies over to take it. My mistress is delighted with your rattle, and she wishes to have it, said the lady. She can have it for one hundred kisses, replied the swineherd. Why, cried the lady-in-waiting, that is even more outrageous than before. I'm sure there is no way she will agree to that. Then I will happily keep my rattle, said the swineherd. I like hearing its music. The lady went to tell the princess about the swineherd's demand. The princess said, I will give him ten kisses just like last time, and one of you ladies can make up the difference. Go back and tell him so. All hundred kisses must come from the princess, insisted the swineherd, or I will keep the rattle for myself. How dare you force the princess to give you kisses, said the princess herself, stepping out from the crowd of ladies. I am certainly not forcing you to do anything, said the swineherd. If you do not want to kiss me, just walk along. But if you want my rattle, my price for it is one hundred kisses. You can leave happy without giving me kisses, and I can go on with my day also happy, listening to the music from the rattle I made myself. Oh, you villain! huffed the princess. I want that rattle, and I will have it. She ordered her ladies to stand around in a circle, as she had done before. Then she began giving the swineherd a hundred kisses he had asked for his price. When the princess was at twenty kisses, the emperor looked out his window and noticed that there was a crowd gathering around the swineherd's pen. He decided to go and investigate. By the time the emperor got out of the palace, the princess was up to fifty kisses, and by the time he made it to the swineherd's pen, She had given the swineherd sixty-eight kisses. The ladies tried to keep the emperor from seeing what was going on, but they could not do much. After all, he was the emperor, so he could tell them to move aside, and they had to do it. Also, he was taller than all of the ladies, and it was not hard for him to look over their heads.
When the emperor saw the swineherd kissing his daughter, he roared in anger and rage. Oh, wicked man, he shouted, be gone from my kingdom at once. If I catch you with my two hands, you will die for this. Then he turned on his daughter. And you too, wicked girl, he cried. False, sinful, terrible girl, you are no daughter of mine. What were you thinking of, kissing a swineherd, when all the princes of the kingdom were buying for your hand? Now none of them will ever want to marry you, and I shall be disgraced. You would not give a second thought to any of the good men here, but you certainly had no problem throwing your arms around a dirty swineherd's neck. Well, if you want to be a swineherd's wife, go and do it, and never show your face in my presence again. And with that, he banished both the princess and the swineherd from his kingdom. The princess wailed with grief. Oh, what am I to do now? She sobbed. I am robbed of my palace, my pretty things, and all my joys in life. I should have accepted that prince's offer when he made it, though he did send nasty natural things as gifts. The prince now took off his dirty swineherd costume, revealing his fine garments underneath. I was that prince, he said. The rosebush and the nightingale you rejected were my prized possessions. I wanted nothing more than to gain your hand, and that was why I took the job as your father's swineherd. Oh, I am saved, said the princess in delight. So I shall simply marry you and go to your castle and we will live happily ever after. But the prince took a step back and eyed her narrowly. Not so fast, he said. You have shown your true colors in the past few days. You set free my nightingale, which was one of the delights of my heart, and did not even have the courtesy to return it or the rose bush to me when you rejected them. Not only that, but you have treated me with this courtesy, demanding to be given the things I made as if you had the right to take everything pretty you ever saw. Even your own heart was less important than your greed, as you were willing to give kisses to get what you want, but never to someone you loved. I do not know if you can love anyone, or if you just want to collect more and more things. You do not even grieve for your father's anger at you, but only for the loss of your palace and your toys. No, I will not join my heart with yours and spend my life with you. If you want your pretty things back, go and beg your father for them. So saying, the prince turned on his heel and went straight back to his home. He found another princess one with less money, but with a kind soul. He courted her and won her heart, and they lived happily ever after together because the love of a kind person is more valuable than all the money in the world.